the book of romans chapter 12 uh, verse 2 the bible says do not conform yourselves to this age but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may discern what is the will of god what is good and pleasing and perfect praise god and then we read again romans chapter 12 and verse now we read again um colossians chapter 3 verse 1 to 4 if then you are raised with christ seek what is above where christ is seated at the right hand of god think of what is above not of what is on earth you have died and your life is hidden with christ in god when christ your life appears then you too will appear with him in glory praise god let us pray father in the mighty name of jesus with us giving lord for your word we offer our hearts and mind to you we pray that you may come to our hearts holy spirit fill us with your presence lord teach us something new that is going to help us to grow more in the knowledge of you and in wisdom to have our mind focused on your eyes fixed on you to be transformed from inside out for the greater glory of your name in jesus name we pray with thanksgiving amen um we are looking at a scripture that is going to help us to meditate on this topic uh, for this meditation which is elevate elevate and these two scriptures uh the first one is talking about a transformation by the renewal of the mind which is going to help us to discern the will of God. So it means we cannot discern the will of God if our mind is not transformed. It means we cannot discern the will of God if our mind is not transformed, is not renewed. And the Bible says that what is the will of God what is good and pleasing and perfect. <laughs> it is good, it is pleasing and it's perfect, but our mind has to be transformed. So it means that we have to have the mind of Christ. That the enemy number one of us not being able to live to live along that path that is called the will of God is the mind. It means then the enemy number 1 to um not being able to pursue the will of god is when our mind is not transformed that is why i believe that freedom is a state of mind jesus came to set us free it is a state of mind when we read the word of god we are purified sanctified renewed the word of god has the capacity all power to renew our mind jesus is the word the word that is alive with a transformed mind renewed by the spirit of god through the word of god then we will be able to perceive to know and to believe the will of god the will of god not just for this world this universe but to know his will for us because we will come to know who god is we will come to know who we are in him we will come to encounter jesus we will come to know who jesus is will come to know what he has done and then definitely as we seek him we are experiencing everything he has done and all this is transforming our mind is transforming our our perception our vision and everything that is connected to our mind and slowly by slowly everything that does not represent god in our mind just vacates and his presence fills us the mind is renewed and transformed and thus in that way it means we are moving in the right direction so the will of god will come into place even 
you know without us uh, knowing because already he has been working in us when we have presented ourselves to him allowed his word to transform us when we present ourselves to him in faith and in the knowledge that he has everything that we need he is the reason that we are here the bible reminds us something here uh, an ideal christian life is to know that we were raised that we were raised with Jesus to seek what is above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God to think of what is above not of what is on earth that means to have our mind elevate from the perspective of Jesus you know uh, looking at our situations to have our minds uh, to think of what is above not of what is on earth you see we cannot just um leave the equation on one side just thinking of what is below because jesus said something very interesting when he was ascending when he gave the mandate to his disciples said i'm going to prepare a place for you why did he say these words because he wants us to know that better better and best than what we can ever find here on this earth is where he is going is where he is at so he did not want us to be just tied to what we can see here on earth because he knows it has a way of pulling us away from his will and his purpose his will and his purpose he said to abba father he said holy father i pray that you may protect these ones that you have given me i do not ask you to remove move them from this world but protect them these ones and the ones who are going to hear about you through them meaning he was already praying a prayer of protection when he was living that is John chapter 17 and it is because he knows and he knows very well he is satan or god remember so he knows very well that <laughs> in this world <laughs> we cannot find um satisfaction contentment it is when our soul finds the lord that it can rest but david said in psalm 63 that your love is better than life meaning he has already experienced the fullness of the love of god and if his soul was that connected to the lord even he was called a man after the heart of god then he knew fully well that irrespective of the 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 greatness that he had been given when he was anointed at a young age when he would worship and experience the presence of god and do all these wonders in his life he knew that he can only rest in god so whenever he went through any situation he was seeking god even at the point where he went through a very difficult situation when at ziglag uh, we have all this um uh the amalekites raided their their town burnt down everything took women and children and david with his men the men that who are meant to be helping him who were always helping him wanted to stone him and he cried until he could not cry anymore and the men were feeling so helpless but the bible records and reveals to us something very major that david encouraged himself in the lord so when you read that the bible reminds us that we think of what is above then it means that our thinking our perception will not be influenced by what we can just see but if we are thinking from the position where Jesus is seated and the bible says we are raised with Christ who is seated at the right hand of God the father then it means we have to look at the same situations that are before us through the eyes of Jesus because we are coming from a point of where Jesus is a point of power a point of of victory it is not defeat defeat is not a divine vocabulary because Jesus already died and won victory for us he died and by his blood he won victory for us so it is all about victory it doesn't matter the struggles and the challenges that you have to come our way but we have to raise and elevate our mind above thinking defeat above 
looking and perceiving defeat above looking at situations with our own human eyes mind and everything but to allow the lord who died for us the one who won victory for us to be our guiding principle to see the very same situations to look at the very same circumstances through his eyes and to believe that it doesn't matter what comes against us what matters is who we are in jesus and who jesus is for us who jesus is for us means he died for us he is able to protect us he is able to heal us deliver us guide us provide for us he is everything that we need and everything that we need is in him he says for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God so if we have all died and our life is hidden in Christ in God then we can only locate ourselves in Jesus so what i see from this scripture the will of god a transformed mind the will of god a transformed mind that we are not just we might be here on earth but we are uh, in faith seated with jesus because he died for us he won victory for us so it means we have a higher a higher a higher um higher stand even when we have events and situations in our life that present anything uh, under the feet of Jesus we have a right and we have um we have this revelation to choose not to accept it not to take it not to believe it but to see it to receive it to confess it in accordance with the will of God with the purpose of God with the word of God because Jesus died and rose again he is not dead he is alive so we have to bring his presence into our life situations and allow our minds to be transformed so we can elevate above everything that seems to push us down intimidate us allow ourselves to elevate above every situation and every circumstance so that Jesus may be glorified that is what needs to happen to him he's done just so so very much he just needs to be glorified in every situation he can make a name for himself he is able he is always in charge he is always in time we worry so much when we think that he's already late he is never late even in the life of Lazarus he seemed to have been late but you see god always has a plan he came at the right time and he did a miracle that they did not even know about oh how i pray that the lord will help you and i to be open to his will and his purpose so very much so so that by his grace by his mercy by his might he can um do that one more miracle in our lives just like in the life of Lazarus that which has not been heard has not been seen that we do not know has not been conceived in the mind of any human being when the lord wants to make a name for himself it is like what happened to the the Hebrew teenagers from uh, Daniel's life none of them knew what was going to happen but god had a plan they refused to allow the situations that they were facing to intimidate them and they knew how great god is their mind was elevated from their normal situations and they were already looking at their situations through the eyes of he who had brought them from the land of slavery the lord the god of abraham isaac and jacob and you know he did not fail so he's not going to start with you and i he never fails he will never forsake us he is god and he is always faithful so i pray that this word of god may help us to elevate elevate from a point of living living a life of mediocrity living um and allowing situations to speak louder than us declaring and glorifying god louder from living at a, a, at a point of defeat and weakness and pain and lack to a level that says who we are in god and what god says about you and i 
and is possible and he is faithful. So we pray that the Lord will glorify himself in our situation and circumstance for the greater glory of his name. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we honor you, we praise you, and we worship you. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for guiding us and helping us to um, grasp this word that you have given us to allow your word to transform our minds, to have our mind elevated from where we are, from the situations that we are in, to how you see us and what you can do about those situations. It doesn't matter how powerless we feel or how challenging it might seem to be or how um, how tough it could get. But Lord, I pray that you may reveal to us reveal to every listener of this podcast the greatness of who you are how great you are and the fact that everything is under your feet that our mind may conceive this fact that you don't have to accept defeat that you don't have to accept everything that comes our way that you can look at every situation from your perspective because you have given us this ability to focus on you and to fix our gaze and our eyes on you so that your name may be glorified in every situation and so that you may also experience the peace the joy and the freedom that you desire that we have help us to have your mind lord change our minds and help us to have your mind we honor you we praise you and we worship you it is in jesus name we pray with thanksgiving amen in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen